I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. In the 1976 film Network, actor Peter Finch portrayed TV anchorman Howard Beale, a latter-day prophet in vain against the hypocrisies of our time. The movie went on to win Academy Awards for Finch, Faye Dunaway, Beatrice Strait, and screenwriter Patty Chayefsky. And while the story was essentially played as satire in the film, in the new multimedia Broadway production of Network, it all too closely resembles reality. Directed by Eva von Hova and starring Brian Cranston as Howard Beale, the cast also includes Tony Goldwyn as Max Schumacher and Orphan Black's Emmy Award-winning actress Tatiana Maslany as the driven TV programming executive Diana Christensen. Here's a look. One minute to go. One minute to go. Can we have Howard, please? Continuity. It's time for tonight with Howard Beale. Five, four, three. Camera and Howard. <laughs> And joining us now is Tatiana Maslany. Tatiana, thank you so much for joining us yeah, today. Thanks for having me. No, Tatiana, as I said in the introduction, Network was considered satire when it first came out in 1976. Yeah. In fact, the one criticism I had of it when I saw it in 1976 was that it was too outlandish, too unbelievable. Uh -huh. You know, sadly, in the age of reality TV and of a reality TV president, mm -hmm. uh, the reality is all too real. Yeah. Now, tell us about what's your take? on the content of this story. Well, what's so wild about the the adaptation that Lee Hall did was that so much of it is drawn directly from the the film. Yeah. And so there's very little that's changed in terms of the content, in terms of what Howard Beale is kind of talking about, about the state of the world, which is kind of scary that we're still stuck in this loop, this kind of cyclical thing where history is repeating itself. Um, and it's very interesting as a cast to feel the audience respond so viscerally to the mention of the Russians, mention of That's all right. these That's sort right. of things that he talks about. Um, and we are so still living in mm. that world. Mm. And, and you sort of see it in network, this creation of reality TV, this um, bending of the truth, this kind of melding of entertainment and news right. that we're very much sat in the middle of right now. Right, right. Yeah. It's not only me, you know, what I was telling my producer today, what I would find, what I would find outlandish today is if it's one of the networks or one of the cable news channels hired a guy like Walter Cronkite. Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That would be, be like, novel. This is wild. Yeah. <laughs> so, totally. I, I, I'm, you know, I read that the, the, the story, the content of this play was one of the things that drew you to it. But, but talk yeah. about how you became involved in this production. Did the producers call you and say, please, we beg you to be in this play, or did no. you have to fight your way into the I met the role? with Evo um, after I'd read the script, and, and I hadn't seen the film before I was given the script to read. Um, so I was just kind of blown away by it, by its um, pres prescience and, and just how uh, real it felt. Um, and, and the uh, meeting with Evo was uh, one in which I was desperate, I would say, <laughs> with like three underlines. <laughs> Because I just thought his vision was so exciting. Um, the fact that Brian was reprising the role and had done such incredible work at the National. Mm -hmm. And the character, Diana, was was such a huge question mark for me. It's somebody who I'd never been approached to play. I'd never gotten that opportunity. She was, she's so, in in so many ways, like, opposite to how I see the world, but mm -hmm. also very much driven by the same ambition and hunger and creative kind of mm -hmm. juice that that I feel like I can relate to. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously she does things that I, I don't <laughs> relate to, but but there's a there's a drive there and a hunger and a, and a vilification of that part that because she's a woman was so exciting to me to yeah, And that's what on. I want to talk to you about because everyone in the film is a bad guy. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. And they're all guys. Yeah. <laughs> except right. for Diana. Even Howard Beale gets a little hinky near the end. Yeah. Uh, yet she was always seen as the villain uh, of the of the film, and, and and I'm just assuming it was 
sexism. It wasn't yeah. because, right? Yeah, but I mean, and we still face it today. Yeah. You know, people are like, God, she's so hate hateful. Mm. I'm like, yeah, but so is everybody in the piece. <laughs> right. And kind of what we're talking about is, is you know, the thing that I admire about Diana is that she sees a system that is like old and she sees a system that is dated and that isn't mm -hmm. touching people in, a, in an emotional way. And she's like, there's more to it. There's more, she sees things outside of the sort of the norm of how they've been done. Mm -hmm. And I think her kind of hitting up against the the patriarchy in a lot of ways, saying like we're sticking with the old way, mm. is very much yeah. a relatable idea concept. Now, every review of this play um, gives you high praise for your portrayal, and it also always seems to mention the fact that this is the role that was played by Faye yeah. Dunaway yeah. in the movie. I wonder if you ever had any hesitation about taking the role, knowing that it was so attached to this one actor, yeah. and, and I'm, I guess knowing that audiences and critics would compare and contrast. Yeah, and I think that that's also a gendered thing. Yeah. Um, it, I think that, that the, the uh, comparison to Faye Dunaway is always gonna be there because it's an iconic female role, yeah. and there were so few of those parts and yeah. she had done such an incredible job with it and I definitely felt nervous about approaching it for that reason but also I was like but they're hiring this person yeah. <laughs> who is so massively different from Faye Dunaway in in every way and I and I feel like you can't compare artists you can't compare actors you know we're doing the play nowadays which unfortunately isn't very different from what it what it was but but it still takes on a different mm -hmm. life and you have to approach it with, okay, what does this mean to us now? And what does this mean to me as a young woman now, as opposed to then? Yeah. How can I take what she did and interpret it through my own filter? But I gotta ask you, what's it like to work with uh, one of the greatest actors alive today, yeah. Brian Cranston? I mean, it, it, pff, every night is, is a masterclass. Every night he gives me chills. Um, when Howard Beale has his sort of breakdown, live on camera for everyone to see. Um, Brian just does such beautiful human work that it always feels like he does this with the audience, no matter how big the space is. Mm -hmm. It's this intimate mm -hmm. feeling because he really is so generous and so he just reaches people. And, and, and I feel that on the stage too. I feel this, I do get chills when he's doing wow. it. At different points, you know, depending on what he's yeah. navigating. Um, yeah, he's just amazing. And he's such a kind guy, and Is he's he? so funny. Oh, yeah, That's good to know. Yeah. Well, Tatiana, thank you so much again for coming thank and you. talking to me about this play. It's an amazing play, and you're amazing in it. Thank you so much for coming.